away. When I'm about to tell you the siren song, that's an amazing opportunity. All right, what do we know about our physical selves? All right, I know how tall I am. I know how much I weigh. Uh, I know that I slept less than six hours this weekend. Uh, I know that my heart rate is up right now. Um, but I don't know how many hours I've slept in the last month. Uh, I don't know exactly how much my heart rate has, has risen. If you think about companies, they use uh, data-driven models to change their behavior. So they observe, they monitor, and then they iterate. Why can't we do that with our physical selves? Traditionally, it's been impossible because to monitor ourselves has been so uh, inconvenient, but this is changing. Devices have recently hit the market that can ambiently track our movements, making it more convenient for us to follow ourselves. Okay, if you think about it, the VCs see the same opportunity. They've invested in companies like WeThings, Zio, and Fitbit to the tunes of tens of millions of dollars. I picked up some of these devices. Uh, they're fantastic. I've got one in my pocket. It measures my physical activity. Um, but there's a problem in the market, which is that as these new devices come online, we're building data silos. So I have all my physical activity information in my Fitbit, which I can see at the website of Fitbit. I've got all my sleep information on my Zio website, right? but I can't see those two data points together. And as more and more devices hit the market and experts analyze that there'll be 60 million devices, health devices, in the US and people's pockets by 2014, all this data will be scattered. So this is our solution, Heal.th. It's a platform that aggregates streams of data from multiple input points to give us a holistic picture of our health. Right? And it delivers two value propositions right off the bat to our customers. The first is that they can see all their data integrated into a single dashboard so they get the picture of what's going on holistically. The second is that they can blend multiple data streams to see correlations in behavior. Okay? So there is some competition in this market. Microsoft Health Vault and Google Health have both built storage-based platforms, but they've never delivered a minimum viable product to their customers to get them engaged in the experience of, of uploading data. They also have brand control issues, uh, trust issues with their customers, and also they would be um, threatening the incumbents in the market to bring this patient-centric model uh, into both Europe and the US. Okay, so what's our revenue model? So yes, we believe that over time, we can offer premium services to our customers, because as we get to know them better, we understand their needs. But the real revenue opportunity here is to leverage the database that we're creating. Okay, so this is basically an ongoing survey, the biggest health survey in history. And we're gonna have a huge population data table which we'll be able to leverage and sell to the health insurance industry. Okay, let's go to a live demo to see what we've done over the weekend. With our team, we built a website. I'm gonna log in now. So like I've told you, I've entered some basic profile information, but now I'm going to upload my sleep data, which I capture using Zio. And I'm also going to upload my physical activity data, which I upload using Fitbit. Now, I don't have a device to monitor my weight, but I want to measure my calories. So we built an app to do that. It's called the Heal.th app. And I'm going to show you in the mobile, uh, I'm not going to do it on the phone because you won't be able to see it, but I'm going to show you in the browser here. So I'm going to measure my caloric intake. And I forgot to mention that I've eaten a sandwich, 600 calories, earlier today. So we're going to enter 600 calories here. Now the important thing to notice on the main dashboard, back to the main dashboard when we refresh, you don't see a lot of specific data here. What you see is an overview to understand where you are in your goals. So are you in the middle of your goal range? Or are you below or above? So I'm well below on sleep uh, for, for today and this week. My steps are okay. And now that I've added that extra caloric intake, my calories have gone to a regular level. Now, I'd like to drag my, my uh, physical activity data. Okay, so here's my sleep data. So I see both how long I've slept overall and how long it took me to fall asleep. Now, what could be interesting is to see how my physical activity has affected that. So now I want to drop in my physical activity data. And I can see here that when I've been more physically active on days that I've played tennis, it actually took me less long to fall asleep. 
Now that's an interesting realization and it'll get more and more interesting as more of these devices hit the market. This project is seal.th. We think it's got a great future ahead of it and I'm glad to have shared it with you today with the help of my team, if my team could stand up in the back. go into having all of your patient file information with you, you're in Croatia, you were too drunk slammed into a wall, but there in that local hospital online, you've got, you've got everything you need, right? Why, yeah. why, why stop at a certain point? Absolutely. So we plan to, we, we absolutely plan to do that. I focused on the ambient data part here because this is what we think creates user stickiness. The storage piece is, is definitely helpful in the e-health context. Microsoft Health Vault and Google Health have both done a lot of work on this. Um, and we can actually leverage the infrastructure they've built, but I've chose to focus on the sticky part, which is getting users to be engaged in a website that they return to day after day. This is your online dashboard. This is your health in, in a single picture. Is that a question in the back? Is that a, yeah. uh, so if I want to use this app, do I have to agree that at some point in the future you will sell my data to a health insurance company? Yeah, so, so maybe I didn't say that clearly. So the data is anonymized. So on the front end, it's your personal data. On the back end, it's purely population data, right? So it's, it's survey data that's not, uh, that's not person specific. Um, yeah, there'll be a radio box. If you don't want to share information, you don't have to. But the more information you share, the more tailored recommendations we can give you because we're not just leveraging it outside our ecosystem, but also within our ecosystem, we're able to compare you to other users and make recommendations about how you can reach your goals, your health goals. All right, thanks. Uh, one more, one more. Yes. Your, uh, your target segment is the self-obsessed health addict <laughs> population. Yeah. How, how useful is that for, for the insurance? Sure. Um, so I believe that today it's a niche market, um, but it's a growing niche market. So one, I don't think we would see the VC money pouring into these device manufacturers if there wasn't a bigger mass consumer market adoption. And two, there's a, a growing kind of movement beyond just the health obsessed to people who are into self-tracking. So it's called the quantified self. Uh, there's a few thousand members today, uh, but it's growing. It went from two meetup groups six months ago to 18 today. So I believe that now is the time to get ahead of this curve. As the hockey player Wayne Gretzky said, you skate to the puck, where the puck is going, not to where it's been. Have you considered... Um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>